King Edgy here bringing you another Gen 1 video. In this one, we are playing the Edgy Challenge. Let's go, let's go. Three games in a row against the same opponent. If they lose all three, they're banished. They can never challenge me again. They win one. They can always seek revenge. They win two. They don't need revenge because they got me, and I'll give them all my respect. But if they win all three, I can't be King Edgy anymore. I'm just Edgy. I am dethroned. So let's see what happens here. Playing against Livid Washed in this one. And I don't know, he's got Kabutops here, and, and we've got Cubone, so not the best matchup for us. Um, Surf makes the most sense for him to do. It's pretty safe, it seems reasonable as a play. We're actually going to stay in an Earthquake. Two things. First off, we could switch into Ghastly, but Ghastly doesn't know Hypnosis and it knows Explosions, so. Uh, I kind of want to save Ghastly for later. Uh, the second thought is maybe he gets a little greedy or maybe he predicts a switch into a water type and goes for Slash or does something silly like that. But one Surf shouldn't knock us out and one Earthquake will do a ton of damage to him. There we go. Perfect call. And now we're pretty sure that he's going to Surf. And let's just check out this damage. Because Kabutops oops, isn't known for his special. Surf does up to 80%. We're at 81, so uh, we're going to survive. Hey, let's go. Look at these. Look at these plays. We're not afraid of a little water. We are not afraid of a little water. You know, and ultimately it turns out that actually switching to Ghastly there would have been the better play. But we're okay with that. We just took down the tops with our Cubone here. And, you know, you're sitting there thinking like, wow, that's a terrible play. You just stay in with a ground type against a water type. But I say uh, the top of the ladder is easiest to fool with strategies that would be used by folks on the bottom of the ladder, right? Top ladder players don't think, hey, he's going to stay in, let me surf. They think, okay, I know he's going to switch out. Let me body slam and paralyze something, right? So if you can actually try to think at the highest possible level, which is sometimes also the lowest possible level, it works out great. So those over-predicts sometimes, they are over-predicts. And as I say all this, I go out straight into Ammonite. Now I'm expecting, like, hey, everything's going to be really straightforward. Livid is going to expect these sorts of things uh, to be more straightforward, and now I'm going to start doing the higher-level plays. Not that that was a high-level play at all to go into Ammonite, but I might do things like double switch and see what happens. Um, we're just going to Hydro Pump. We don't think he has another Water-type... He's got Beedrill, we don't care. Beedrill knows Mega Drain, which is annoying, so we'll go Charizard here, show Charmeleon what's up. All right, that was a crit and it did 2%, hilarious. Uh, so what should we do here? Well, Beedrill doesn't bother us in any way, right? Maybe it gets a Hyper Beam off and does what, 35%? So we don't really care about it. Um, what would make sense to switch into Charizard is a water type, but we don't think he has any. So we feel pretty comfortable staying in here and maybe just going for a body slam. Always the middle of the ground play. So let's see. I don't know that you'd want to save Beedrill anyway because it's kind of garbage, but, but we'll see what happens here. You know, could switch into Charmeleon, for instance, right? And we get the body slam off and that's good. And we get the paralysis, which is great. So we are firing on all cylinders to start here. And now the straightforward play is to go Ammonite. The cheekier play is to go and go ghastly, huh? So what do we expect to happen here? Uh, we switch to Ammonite. We expect him to double switch, right? Who does he want to take Ammonite? I think he's shown that because he went Beedrill, nothing can really take Ammonite particularly well. So I kind of expect that Ammonite's my key to victory here. I'm not going to put him in harm's way. Maybe Charmeleon knows submission and somehow gets a critical hit submission, right? Something wonky like that. 
So I think I'm going to stay in an earthquake. Oh, you know, every play is right if you just get a crit every time. That's what I've learned. And now Ditto comes out. So what should we do? Um, I guess... I guess we should... Yeah, I, I don't know what to do at all. Uh, I, I was saying, saying how Ammonites are key to victory, right? If Ammonites are key to victory, then do we let his ditto take it out? Tough to say. We could go Ghastly. Charizard's faster than Ghastly. I guess we'll go Cubone, right? Cubone versus Cubone. Does Blizzard knock you out? About half the time it'll knock me out. So if we lose the speed tie, then half the time it knocks us out. And so maybe a 25% chance we get knocked out here, which seems worth the risk. Great, we do more than half. He does get the knockout on us, but that's okay. Not the best, not the worst, just okay. And now we can just Fire Blast away. We got rid of his Water type, we got rid of his Fire type. Nobody wants to take a Fire Blast except for that Chansey that's lying in the back, ready to pounce. So here we go. Get rid of that, real nice. And we're feeling good, we're up 5-3. And one of his is Beedrill, which gets one shot by this, or this Fire Blast. Oddish comes out. What's Oddish going to do? I mean, it's going to put us to sleep, right? Do we care if Charizard gets put to sleep? Nope. Oh, now we do. That was a bad miss. That was a bad miss. Um, so here's the situation now. We don't know what's last. If he's willing to sacrifice Oddish, his last must either be super weak to Charizard. Or, I don't know what the or is there. Um, but I guess we'll go to Mew here. Yeah, he made the right call going Stun Spore there, right? Makes total sense. I'm going to Swords Dance twice and then Hyper Beam into this Beedrill. I think it'll Twin Needle us, which is super effective. But maybe it's Swords Dances or just something funny. But this Mew is Explosion Mew, right? Oh, come on with these misses, dude. Wow, really? Okay. Well, now we can Swords Dance again and hope that Pinsir can sweep this team. Because we were wrong about Ammonite there, that Oddish can kind of take it down pretty nicely. But gosh, that was unfortunate. Unfortunate Fire Blast miss, unfortunate Mew Paralysis, unfortunate Mew miss. But we'll Swords Dance here. Should we Swords Dance again? Is it too greedy? I mean, Double Edge is 21% to us, so we don't really care. We can stay in. Of course, now he gets the critical hit. Okay, I guess we're getting too greedy, huh? Um, three times attack, I think, is actually enough to knock out the B drill. Right, body slam at plus, yep. Three times attack should do the trick. Oddish will go down. Radicate. Cool. Radicate's hyper beam knocks us out for sure. But I think we stay in and body slam. Because I think he might be worried about the Ammonite switch in. Obviously, I don't know that for sure. But he's not. He's not worried about it at all. But we're in such good shape here that, like, Raticate's only option really is to try to freeze us. And Ghastly in the back is also very good. So I guess we're in okay shape. You know, and he might think if he Super Fangs, right, then he's good because Super Fang... Um, plus the Mega Drain from Beedrill, and then he hopes that Beedrill can clean it up, but 
In this case, Beedrill cannot clean it up. He might not even get to see our ghastly here. But he might go for the freeze. Again, I think that's his best play. Not sure, but wow, his team. Really not that good. And we got uh, lucky a couple times and unlucky a couple times. So I think overall it evened out. Went for the hyper beam, didn't get it. Even if it was a crit, wouldn't have knocked us out. So we were sitting pretty there. I guess we were kind of right that Ammonite was our key because Raticate was really worried about him. But Ghastly in the back, I mean, Ghastly walled his whole team. So that's game one. We took it down, which is great, which means we are still king for at least another day. Uh, and now we are going against Livid again. I hate our team. Hate it. And Doug Trio versus Voltorb. I don't like even a little bit. I'm going to switch out to Machop. I think he just stays in. He might go body slam. That's what he did last time. But we don't have anything to, to take the earthquake, so... No, he goes out into Victory Bell. Okay. Is Victory Bell going to put us to sleep? Yes. Okay. But now guess what? We've got Beedrill, but Victory Bell's probably going to body slam us here. No, it goes double powder. That's cool. That's cool with me. Twin Needle does a bunch of damage to Victory Bell, but I think I expect the switch out. Who would he switch out to? I don't know. I don't know who he'd switch out to. And so Twin Needle... 25 pow, hits twice as 50, 75 power with uh, stab, so I guess it's okay, plus it could poison, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how we're going to win this one, our team is dreadful. Voltorb we like, thought was alright, but Doug Trio plus Victory Bell right off the bat. I mean, Voltorb's walled. Voltorb's explosion, though, probably does knock out Doug Trio in one hit which is the only thing I'll say in the positive column there, um, that it's not a rock ground type where Voltorb really can't do anything. So if it had to come down to it, you could always try for the tie. Oh, he's got the Ammonite this time. The tables have turned. Um, and we'll just try the Mega Drain, get some good damage off, right? Oh, and the crit? I mean, that's a critical hit, four times effective attack. It doesn't even do half to Ammonite. Ammonite does not care. Uh, and here's the situation. I'm actually going to switch out to Horsey. And I think it seems strange, but Beedrill, uh, knowing that Victory Bell has both Powders and Razor Leaf, its last is probably Body Slam. Beedrill can survive that and maybe one-shot the Victory Bell. And I've got two water types, so I've got one to spare. And I'd rather spare the uh, horsey here. Spare the horsey? Rather sacrifice the horsey, I guess. Um, and we're just going to straight surf. See what happens. Because I guess the, the big hope is that we can potentially get Kingler in with a swords dance and then sweep. I don't really know what else we can possibly do in this one. We just don't have the Pokemon here. The Voltorb has Thunder Wave. I don't think anything else has any status stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. Gonna be tough. That's gonna help. That's gonna help a whole lot because we had no answer to Magnemite. <laughs> and now, now we've got an answer. And that answer's horsey. Well, that was great. That was actually really great. Now, now I'm just thinking here, right? So if he sends out Victory Bell, which he could, is Victory Bell going to body slam? I think so. 
I don't know. That was the play last game, right? Kabutops kept body slamming. I kind of think Victory Bell might body slam if it comes out here, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The fact that he's taking so long, again, makes me think that he might be scared of Horsey. And this is great news for us because we've got another water type in the back. So we're actually feeling pretty good here. Despite really disliking our team a whole lot. And then, you know, Wicketong is so slow. But nothing can take it out particularly easily. It can body slam, it can sword stance and hyper beam. So we've got some options. He goes wiggly tough here, which I love. I am thrilled about that um, because it takes three attacks for wiggly tough to knock us out, I think. And we can knock him out in three attacks, certainly. Um, so we'll just surf one more time. We'll get fully paralyzed. That one did hurt. That paralysis did hurt. Um, man, yeah, that really hurt. Because uh, we were hoping to get off the second surf, then agility, surf for the knockout, and then kind of coast here. So what do I have to do now? Surf does 37, so he'll be at 26%. I need to see. Uh, it also means I need to reveal Kingler. 26% puts him in range for body slam. Uh, is it our best play? Hydro Pump versus Surf. So I guess the thing is, right, Surf makes it a 50-50 situation against Wigglytuff. So Hydro Pump gives me slightly better odds, even though it might miss. So we'll try the Hydro Pump and see. Cool, we got it, great. Uh, now we'll stay in an agility just in case, but of course he just finishes us off, no problem. And we can go Kingler here and body slam pretty safely. After this, I would expect that the Victory Bell has to come out next, right? It has to, it has no choice. And then the question is, how scared am I? I think the answer is pretty scared. Um, and so against my better judgment, I'm going to Beedrill here. Ooh, he's taken so long to think. He got burned last game by staying and going for the body slams. Will he this game? Will he double? He's thinking about so many things. He got me. He got me good with that crit. But, you know, that's okay. That's how it goes sometimes. Um, and now, really, I just have to kind of get damage off, right? I get a little damage and I'm feeling good. So, I guess I should Earthquake for damage. Uh, it won't do as much as Body Slam, but if he switches to Ammonite, I might catch him and get the knockout. 40% is a tall order for Wicketung with its terrible attack, but I just really kind of need to chip down this victory bill. So that's in range. Oh my god. <laughs> I guess I should have swords danced and then hyper beamed. Um, now I'm going body slam. And I'm going body slam because I expect victory bill to switch out to Ammonite now. So why would I go body slam? Well, a good question. Um, I guess it's because it's the safe middle, right? That I, if Victory Bell does stay in and I body slam it, it does some damage. Yep. But if we get the paralysis on Ammonite, which we do, then it's great. And do we finish it with an earthquake? Body slam did 9%. Just triple that. So I don't think we get it even with this earthquake. Oh. A lick a tongue crit. They say it's impossible. They say it's impossible. But we just got it. So let's go. And now I hope to see his last. Really hope that, because Doug Trio, I don't want to see right now. Yeah, I don't want to see Doug Trio right now. Um I mean, it doesn't knock us out, and we could potentially paralyze it with Body Slam, but 
I'm just going to write too lucky here. That was way too lucky to get the paralysis and then to get a critical hit earthquake. Unbelievable luck. Oh, he comes out with victory bell. Oh, is this really good? I think this is really good. Yeah, I think that's really good. I think King Lore takes him out now with a body slam. Oh, only half the time? Oh, only half the time. Now, Livid gets to switch if he wants, right? Can totally switch. But if somehow Kingler is our guy, then, then that's great. Maybe we can make this happen. Yeah, okay. So Kingler comes out here. And 90% of the time it knocks him out with Hyper Beam. So we gotta go Hyper Beam. It's just too risky to, right? Because it's only 50, yeah, 28 to 33. So only half the time will it do this 32%. So, I mean, he could switch into something that tanks this hyper beam and then just destroys us. And that's what we'll have to deal with if that happens. But if he's got like, I don't know. I don't know who he could have in the back that that wants to eat this. He's already had a rock type. If he know has anyone that knows counter, like that's really bad. But oh, he got Tauros. Okay. Okay. It's not terrible as long as we don't get paralyzed by Tauros. Then it's not terrible. And we didn't. And now we can go Machop. Uh, I expect the Body Slam here. I don't think Body Slam would actually put Kingler in range for Doug Trio. And Crab Hammer knocks out Tauros, right? Definitely does. Does Thunderbolt from Tauros do? No, he got a maximum roll there. Hyper Beam from Tauros does 44, which like definitely puts us in range though. Yeah, we have to switch out, right? We have no choice but to switch out. Yeah, I think we have no choice but to switch out here. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's looking bleak because Tauros is faster than Kingler. If he wasn't, I'd be feeling way better, but I think our only hope now is to really hope for a mistake. If somehow Voltorb gets to explode on Dugtrio and knock it out, we've got a chance. Livid is flirting with the timer here. Goes Thunderbolt again. Wake up. Oh, I get the wake up. Is that big? Does that matter? Does it matter? I think so. I don't know if he can switch out because I, I could no counter, right? But it's like, do I know submission or do I know counter? Stays in? Yes! Oh, too lucky there. Way too lucky there. Okay. Um, so is that game? Uh, pretty sure Voltorb Explosion does Doug Trio in, but I didn't actually check it. It does, guaranteed to knock it out. King Wars Crab Hammer also guaranteed to knock it out. So, the play is Voltorb and Explode. Because Voltorb's Explosion will knock Dugtrio out, it'll also knock out Victory Bell. And if we went Kinglore first and somehow he got a crit earthquake or did something wild, um, 
then we'd lose uh king or doug trios earthquake on a crit might not even knock us out actually it could be close yeah it doesn't have to knock us out on a crit he stayed in do we just win do we win with body slam against no we're still at that 50 percent, right yeah so we win with this hyper beam yes huge wow and that was wild. I don't even think he made a mistake. I mean, I guess when Machop came out, could have gone back to Victory Bill, um, just in case Machop woke up. But if I was trying to set up a pivot, I think it was a 50-50 call there. And Holy cow, we squeaked out of that one. Wow, I can't believe that. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. Well, this game, our team's way better. Um, team is way better this game. So what can we do? Well, we can just put Venomoth to sleep. That would be pretty awesome. Let's do it. He might switch out. Venomoth's pretty valuable. Um, but unbelievable luck here on the draw that we get someone faster than Venomoth. Who could put it to sleep? Because how many Pokemon in the game can you say that about? Poliwag? Is that it? 215 speed? Polo World's tied? No grass types are faster? I think that's it. This is very lucky as a start. And we hope we don't miss hypnosis, which we've been on a pretty good streak with recently. So let's see. Cool, he goes Paris. Sweet, so he had two sleepers, okay. So now I guess the question is, do I go for the potential freeze or do I go for damage? Um, I think I go for the potential freeze because it's just so good if it works. And again, we're sticking true with our mantra of just always crit and you're fine. <laughs> no, I've been stupidly lucky in this series. Yeah, really lucky. Wow, that did a lot more to Paris than I thought it would. But it's okay. We don't need Paris because, uh, I mean, it could paralyze things, but so can Magneton. Paris can't put anything to sleep now that his Paris is asleep, so it seems okay. Goes out into Cloyster, which is a fine move. Let's get that paralysis. Here we go. Uh, phew. We don't have a great switch in. Do we want to save Paris though? Because it's paralyzed and like could paralyze that Venomoth right back. Sure, let's try it. Let's hope he doesn't freeze us, which he doesn't. Awesome. And now what do we expect? Do we expect the ground type to come out? I mean, we haven't seen it yet. So we expect it, but... We feel confident enough that we can go Golbat, that we're not terribly worried, so we're going to stay in and Thunderbolt. No, he just goes back to Magneton. Okay. No problem to me. I'm going to stay in and Thunderbolt again. I don't, I don't know if he thinks we'll go back to Paris, right? Which is a really good thought, but do we need Magneton for anything? Not yet. Like Special types are handled by Chansey. Yeah, so we're okay. We're okay to Thunderbolt. Yep. And then, um, oh, we got the crit Thunderbolt. Uh, let's just try to win the speed tie then. Here we go. I was going to say, if we didn't get that crit, we hyper beamed him and, and had him anyway. So that crit really didn't matter very much. Um, at this point, we can go Paris. I guess we don't want to risk the... Magneton being put to sleep, but he'll go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Now, he doesn't want to stay in with Venomoth and risk it getting put to uh, paralyzed. So we're going to Mega Drain here, thinking that he'll go back to Cloyster. Is that what we're going to do? Is that our middle ground play? I think that's our middle ground play. Ooh, he stays in. Wow, he just stayed in Psychic. Okay. That's fine. I guess I'll stay in again. Oh, dang. 
He's not staying in this time though, right? No way. Oh, I guess it didn't matter. But oh, how unfortunate that was. All right, so we got to go to Golbat now. And we're just looking for damage on this Venomoth because if we can get off enough damage, we can just put him right in range for Poliwag to clean him up. Um, if he decides to put us to sleep, phenomenal. Really excited about that possibility uh, because we don't need Golbat. We want our Flareon to be able to clean up this Venomoth. But, I don't know. I don't know, I'm not sure. Not sure about this. This Cloister actually is a bigger problem than I thought. We've got the Magneton, but Chansey only knows Ice Beam as its attack, which is a real bummer. Um, Poliwag can't really do much to Cloister. It needs to set up. And then it's still probably a three shot after one amnesia. Well, maybe it's a two shot if Cloister's at 80%, but. Hey, we get some big damage off. That's great. Oh, that's real good. That's real nice. Um, we don't think Psychic will knock us out from here. Great. We'll knock ourselves out with this double edge, but that's fine. Um, because Poliwag just kind of cleans it up, right? And Livid might switch out to Cloyster, who can eat this Surf all day. But that's okay with us, because we'll just kind of play it very cautiously, right? So if he goes Cloyster, we'll go Magneton. Very cautious play, but we don't need to risk anything because... We do have the advantage right now, even though we're down two Pokemon. Yep, okay. I still think we have the advantage. So, will he just double back to Venomoth? I don't know. It's risky, right? So, I'm going to go Magneton. I don't think he'll double out. Yeah, it just explodes. So, that's great. Um, and now, who is he going to send out? Well, who's strong against a water type? We've got electric types, we've got grass types, right? So both of those make a lot of sense. And Flareon's actually pretty good against both of them. So Clefable comes out. We're faster than Clefable, which is great. Clefable could no sing, which would be unfortunate if it hits. Because Clefable is one of those rare mixed attackers that could actually pose a good threat to both Chansey and Poliwag. But he could switch out here to Paris and then hope that Venomoth can put me to sleep. But I think Quick Attack could knock out Venomoth from that range. So, again, still feeling pretty good. If he paralyzes us with Thunder Wave, we're feeling great. Because that means we have a block for Venomoth's Sleep Powder. But yeah, we're feeling good. We're feeling kind of like it's three on three because this Paris is asleep. Moltres is his last. Okay, interesting. What do we do with Moltres, huh? Um, I think we do one body slam and see. Cool. Very cool. Um... I think, I think Flareon plus Poliwag wins it for us. So I'm going to go Chansey. Great. Now we can Ice Beam. He might go for the Critical Hit Hyper Beam, right? Which would be a pretty good play. Uh, but the Ice Beam damage will put Moltres in range for Flareon or... Poliwag, I believe. Could switch out to Clefable here if he wanted to, but I don't know. I don't know that that would be a really good play. Goes Agility. So we'll go Soft Boiled here in case he decides to go Hyper Beam again. No, he's fully paralyzed. Okay. So in that case... We'll just go Ice Beam, because he'll knock himself out, right? There we go. Chansey's got so much health that the recoil damage is unreal. Now Venomoth puts us to sleep. 
which is expected but not terrible. We're just going to stay in with Chansey and probably let it go down. But I am going to check out if Flareon knocks out Venomoth with the quick attack. Uh, usually from this range. Oh, dang. That was not what we wanted to see. Okay, so we got to switch out now. And he might stun Spore us. That would be unfortunate, but we have to do it. Can't let him get back more health. But we'll just go Body Slam. Cool. Missed the Stun Spore. That's great. Two Fire Blasts, please hit. And then a Surf. And I think, I think two Fire Blasts and a Surf should be good to get it done. We'll see. Clefable is thick. Clefable is thick. I guess that Moltres play, I should have just spammed Soft Boiled one more time. Maybe indefinitely, I don't know. Chansey would have had a little bit more health. But if this Clefable happens to be exclusively a special attacker, then we're in okay shape. Oh, man. Chan uh, Clefable did no sing, but we got... We got lucky that Chansey was still asleep, right? Because in Showdown you can't um, can't put another you can't put more than one Pokemon to sleep at a time. So so we got it. Whew! We pulled that one out, and so that's our set. That was the edgy challenge with Livid Washed, but guess what? It was a 3-0 victory for Edgy. Uh, again, a lot of luck there, right? Like that first game, we just kind of stubbornly said, I think he's going to overpredict. We got lucky, Ammonite, huge, ghastly in the back. Like that matchup was too good. In this one, we got super lucky. Machop woke up right when we needed it to, and we made the, we made the play of just going submission and hoping, and that worked out great for us. Um, and then this last one, again, we had the much better matchup. Um, Polywag at the start, just too good. And so Vivid, we put up a good fight, but you are joining Tyler in the banished column. If you ever want to come to try to dethrone me again, I'm not even going to accept your challenge. But feel free to battle me any other time because tons of wrap up this fifth session of the Edgy Challenge. Thanks so much for watching. There we go. And I'll see you in the next one.